you were from over in the UK. I just heard your voice and I was like, I like this guy's voice. So when I offered it to you, I hadn't even looked to see where you were from. And then it was like, oh, he's from UK. Oh, that's even better. But I like Oh, really? So so when you when you decided on me, you okay. thought I was uh, uh, um from, uh, the United States. I just thought he was a guy um <laughs> <laughs> who just had a nice voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I read further, and I'm like, wait, this guy's from the UK. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. These Brits coming over here and taking these jobs off Americans is bad enough with Hugh Laurie and all those seasons of House. I don't know. And now this audiobook narrator's out. It, it's, t it's shocking. Something, yeah, someone cool. Oh, they were so much fun to do. And, um, you know, I've done lots of different characters and lots of different accents and uh okay and my wife julie she said to me she said uh, so which book are you working on today and i said oh i'm a lawyer in this one and she's like oh, all right what a british lawyer I says no american and she's like what and i said yeah um a woman and it's uh lgbtq <laughs> Uh, and, and and she's black and she's like but you're nothing like that and i went i know but i got the gig <laughs> i like your voice yeah it was your voice <laughs> is my stuff outside i asked starting to get upset yep all day and every day was her response i stood there talking to myself and even answering myself did she walk past me in the living room with my clothes? No, I didn't see her. Did she throw my clothes out of the window? No, she's not crazy. But then again, her elevator does not go all the way to the top. Let me look out this window to see. I walked to the window, and I was very surprised to see all of my nice Chicago Bears jerseys and my collection of other NFL vintage jerseys hanging in a tree. And the ones that were not hanging were walking down the street under the arms of a few neighborhood hypes. I screamed so loud that AJ and Diane came running into the room in shock to see what was going on. Zoe, what happened? AJ asked, concerned. Keisha tossed all my clothes out of the window for no apparent reason. Oh, trust me, there's a reason. Anike Bay, it's great to talk to you. How are you? I'm doing very well. How are you? Excellent. Nice to and finally oh, meet you. And you too. We've corresponded many times. We've done two books together, but this is the first yeah, time we've been able to see and even talk to each other. So I mean, I it's know. I'm very busy. sorry. No, it's a real thrill for me. This. How are things in Chicago? Uh, everything is good. Um, nice seventy degrees today. Uh, you know me working busy always busy. yeah yeah you are very busy it's always hard it, in fact it's taken us a few goes to get this time when we could both when it works out on everybody's schedule to to uh, to be able to talk so it's, yeah, it's we, uh, yeah we have been dodging each other since uh probably october last year i think right <laughs> yeah. I've been since the first book yeah. yeah 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 my job my job it, yeah my job can you say where you work, or would you like to keep that secret? Oh uh, no, I like to keep that secret. Okay, who's just yeah, come by? Who's just come secret. by this? Have you got company? Oh, that, that's one of my sisters. Okay, all right. And does she yeah. does she live with you as well in Chicago? Well, she lives somewhere. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. And it's <laughs> seventy degrees, or as they say in Chicago, cooler by the lake. Definitely. 70 inland. Um, cool. By the lake is probably 50. Okay. Wow. It's quite a big difference then. Because I used to, well, I've been to Chicago a couple of times. I've been to radio conventions there. Yeah, and, it? and, oh, I like Chicago. My kind of town, Chicago is. Yeah. yeah I went beautiful. to, um, I went, the first time I went, I stayed at the Hard Rock Cafe. And, I love uh, that place. And, and we rented a car and we went out to Buddy Guy's Legends Club and we watched oh, yeah, uh, yeah. we watched John Primer, who was Muddy Waters' guitar player in the last lineup of Muddy's band, apparently. And he was really oh, yeah. good. Oh, yeah, but there's, yeah. a, there's another club, another blues club I want to go to called Kingston Mines. I don't know if you've heard of it or if it's even oh, still yeah, going. 
Uh, still, I think it's still up north, yeah. It's up yeah, north. yeah. I, I so whereabouts, I, I whereabouts are you? I think it's more Jamaican uh, club and blues. Yeah. Me, I'm on the south side of Chicago. Yeah, but and the, is that... Is, um, the um, Buddy Guy Club is downtown, and then the Kingston, that's up north. That's up by the um, uh, Chicago Cubs Stadium close by. Right, yeah. I got... Um, I I got ripped off when I went to the to the Buddy Guy Legends Club, but it How'd was you get ripped off there? but it was so entertaining the way it was done. I had to hand it to the guy who conned me. I had a rental car, so of course I looked like a tourist. Okay. And we decided we didn't know this place, and you know, you know, Chicago has a reputation. So I said to Julie, I said, let's just take some cash, and we'll leave anything valuable here at the hotel. And we'll just take cash with us and and we'll go, right? So okay. so so we drive to this there's a car park round the back of the club. And I drive in and this big guy knocks on the window and he says, Ten dollars. And I said, Oh, I thought you're paying the machine for the parking and he went, No, you pay me. Mm-hmm. And I went, Okay. So I gave him the ten dollars and he gave me a ticket. He says, Put that in the window and I put it in the window and he helped back me in. He he, you know, got it in and whatever. We get in the club, we get in the club, and I'm in my 40s at the time, and in the club, they said, have you got any ID? I said, you're joking, aren't you? I'm in my 40s. What's the drinking age here? Like, 40? Yeah. And they said, oh, no, you can't come in without ID. Oh, geez. So we had to drive back to the hotel, back to the Hard Rock. We get back there. We get my driver's, no, my passport with my um, date of birth in it. We drive back, we get to this car park, the guy's not there, and it's a machine, and I had to pay another $10 for parking. But I got to hand it to the guy that, that ripped me off. He He's worked it. He even, had t- he even had tickets printed and backed me in and helped me, guided me in. I mean, he really oh, was yeah. working it. He oh, must yeah. just sit oh, there yeah. all day waiting for rental cars. It's just too easy. Oh, yeah. He probably too made easy. a lot of money that day. <laughs> So I got to hand it to him. He's quite an enterpri- enterprising crook. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You, so, need, you need your ID in Chicago to get into wherever you're trying to get into. They don't play like that. Yeah, yeah. Because here in, in, this, in this country, the drinking age is 18 anyway. But oh, wow. you wouldn't get... Yeah, you wouldn't get asked for ID if you looked anywhere near 30. Never mind, I was in my 40s. They, they ask here because people don't want to lose their um, liquor license um, here. It's, it's yeah. very hard to get it. You know, it's, and it's very expensive too. Yeah, so, yeah, and it cost them a lot of money if they lost it. So it's mm-hmm. important. Yeah, yeah, so they'll be mad. So, yeah. So it's, Did you grow up in safe. Chicago? Sorry. Yeah, I was born and raised here in Chicago. I'm in the south side? side? Yeah. Yeah. So when you were a kid, because now you are a successful author, when you were a kid, what kind of stuff were you reading? Oh, well, my favorite movies were, um, I was into uh, sci-fi, Twilight Zone, uh, Outer Limit, stuff like that. Um, I was interested in the, um, uh, the Bermuda Triangle, the Dragon Triangle, just stuff that's, um, the unknown, the, the stars the ocean what's in it you know um like ghost stories uh aliens anything <laughs> anything that i can't see or feel yeah so when did you start writing i started writing in uh, 20 uh, probably 2005 okay I I was um, at work with a friend of mine, and uh, we were we used to work with people with disabilities. So we used to take them out on outings. And so one day um, we went to the mall with our people, and um, she went into the mall to buy something. And so I just waited for her in the van. It took her about 45 minutes or something like that. So anyway, while she was in there, I started thinking about my first day of school, um, Head Start, I guess, or kindergarten. And um, so I wrote, a, I wrote a funny story about it. So when she came out of the mall, I was like, hey, let me, t- let me t- um, read this story to you that I wrote. It's about my first day of kindergarten. So I read it to her, and she just laughed, laughed, and laughed. And she was like, girl, you should um, publish that. And I was like, yeah, right. So uh, she said, I've only been gone 45 minutes. And I was like, yeah, I know, right? So 
I, I didn't even publish it in 2005. I think I threw it in my a storage bin with some more of my items and left it there for five years. And then uh, one year I went in there and got it and started the process of publishing it. So, yeah. And, and it's is called it's, uh, Little Iris First Day at School. So Little Iris First Day at School. So it's a kid's book yeah. is, in, is, in essence then, yeah? Yes, it's a, it's a kid's book. Yeah, definitely. Because I, I didn't know my first name. Um, uh, I, my, my dad used to call me Kidden. Uh, Kitten. And, uh, so when I, yeah. So when I went to kindergarten, uh, kids were they were like you know calling kids names and stuff like that, and they got to me and was calling my name Iris, and I was like, "Hey, she not talking to me." <laughs> so I never answered, and then you know I got in trouble for it, and yeah, they called my mom, and so my mom came to school and told me my my first and last name. So it wasn't Kitten. <laughs> Right. I wasn't but, kidding, so, but I, I got in trouble for that. Right. But now you're a Nikkei. Yeah, I'm a Nikkei now because uh, after I wrote that book, I was thinking uh, if I wrote that in 45 minutes and uh, published it five years um, later, that I could uh, write another book, right? Yeah. So uh, Tyler Perry, being uh, one of my favorite producers, um, I think I had read somewhere that he had written uh, a, a 100 episodes of, um, it was either Meet the Browns or Meet the Pains, something right. like that. Okay. And so I figured, you know, well, I can create something too, just like Tyler, you know, and write 100 episodes or whatever. And so that's what I started working on, uh, uh, a LGBTQ book um, called um girls like us um it's about girls um like me and girls that i probably um know have met um uh, probably dated you know um you know just trying to um put out there how our life was yeah. back in the uh, in the uh, early 2000s stuff like that so yeah and th and that's that was the the start of girls like us and you and I have worked on, on two audiobooks now, Girls Like Us, Episode 1 and Episode 2. Well, yeah, tell us I about have, the... I think sorry? I have uh, four. I think I have four Girls Like Us books out on Amazon. Right, and they're Girls actually like out as books. Four. Yeah, it's one to four, but there's only the first two so far that we've got out as, as audiobooks. Yes. And where did the inspiration for the characters come from? Because you say that these were people like you and people you know, people you, you were hanging out with was the inspiration. Uh, but, you know, you've got a lawyer in this. Do you have people who are lawyers? Because they'd be handy friends. No, I have, no, I have friends. I have, I have friends who are doctors, friends who are lawyers, I yeah. have police officers. I have a great group of friends. Yeah, so, you know. But uh, I, have a, I think lawyers are cool people. So... Um, I wanted the females to be a little bit class, classy, a little raunchy, you know. Oh, so, oh they are they are classy and they, they are funny. raunchy. Yeah, they raunchy. They definitely raunchy. I think I, was <laughs> say, I think I was trying to say, you know, you can take the girl out the neighborhood, but you can't take the neighborhood out the girl. Uh, you know, even though they grew up in the hood, you know, and they've gone on to great careers, you know, they can still. <laughs> They're ready to fight at any time, you know. So, They've got street you know. smarts. I, I wouldn't <laughs> take them on. I would not yeah. mess with them, your, the characters yeah. in your books. Um, yeah. They are so yeah. cool, and they've got such depth, and you've, you, you even include their family, and you've got the little the family dramas, the relationship dramas, yeah. and some of them, some of them particularly in the second book, quite, quite serious, quite heavy topics we're dealing with domestic, domestic abuse, yeah. really, aren't we? Yeah. So yeah, it was, like, to me, I would have thought that's quite a brave topic to, to quite a challenging topic. It, was, was there a reason for that? Well, after touching on the basis in part one about the relationships and about, um, girls dating girls and having a boyfriend on the side i thought that was great to address that in part one because i see it a lot but then yeah. in part two i think um i just wanted to um i also see like a lot of women they date um other women because they think that um women can't do to them or won't do to them what men do uh, which sometimes maybe like physically abuse them 
And I think I was just trying to let them know that, you know, you have to be careful no matter who you date because women abuse women as well. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I just wanted to let the straight girls know, just be careful. You know, uh, it happens. Yeah. Woman, yeah. woman on woman abuse, man or female abuse, it happens. You just have to be careful. So Not just physical either as well. There's also emotional abuse, isn't there? And, yeah. and you do emotional, touch on that a little bit emotional. in the books too. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. And then it's like... Uh, like it's um physical abuse is on uh, like a um a silent killer. Like they say, by the time you realize what's going on with your relative, they're they're probably dead. So I just thought wow. that you know that should be something that I touch on. Yeah. So you 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 haven't shied away from the heavy topics, but there is a lot of humor in the books too, isn't there? Really. It's about yeah. life, you know. There is both sides of things. I don't want people who haven't read them or listened to them think, "Oh, this sounds like pretty heavy." What lawyers and domestic? There's, it's, it's about real people being real. So there's, there's, yeah. there's fun in there too. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. So you know, it's just, it's about life. You know, yeah. it's about relationships and uh, it's about life. Everyday drama. You know, mother, father, sister, brothers, uncles, nieces, nephews. Everybody yeah. has family issues, friends issues, you know. Yeah. I just wanted to touch on a little bit of something. And Quite dramatic, too, as well. In, in the first book, um, I don't want to give too much away because I, I want people to enjoy them, is when um, when somebody gets thrown out and all her stuff is on, is on, oh. is outside the place, outside the apartment. Zoe. Zoe. Yeah. Yeah, that was funny. Yeah. That was yeah. Funny. yeah. She's my favorite character, actually, Zoe. I, oh, Zoe. I think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, the movie it's, it's, it's so funny. The movie, um, I went to Florida, oh, I forget which year, but I went to Florida. I had submitted it to a film festival, mm -hmm. and um, I think the Florida International Film Festival, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, I went there and I pitched the book. So, uh, the book, The Girls Like Us, season one, is actually a movie as well. So, yeah, yeah. and it, where can we get I, that? I, can, I we, can we, can we, that's on can Amazon. we find that? That is on Amazon, so you just yeah. got to look for Anike Bay and, and Girls Like Us. There's Girls a movie, like season, there's books. Like season one. Season one, and we've done season one and season two as audio, audio books. books, and then each chapter yeah. is a different episode, isn't it? There's, there's it's it's season mm -hmm. and, and each is is, is, is it different episodes yeah. in each one. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, well, they are terrific, and thank you so much for allowing me. To, to have fun with the characters and and um, and do their I voices. Voice. <laughs> I, I love I your voice, Graham, when you submitted your voice. And I was like, oh. And I didn't even know you were from over in the UK. I just heard your voice. And I was like, I like this guy's voice. So when I offered it to you, I hadn't even looked to see where you were from. And then it was like, oh, he's from UK. Oh, that's even better. But I like Oh, really? So so when you when you decided on me... You thought I was uh, uh, um, from uh, the United States. I just thought he was a guy um, who just had a nice voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I read further, and I'm like, wait, this guy is from the UK. <laughs> I don't know. These Brits coming over here and taking these jobs off Americans is bad enough with Hugh Laurie and all those seasons of House. I don't know. And now this audiobook narrator's out. It, it's t it's shocking. Something, yeah, so much. Ah, oh, they were so much fun to do, and um, you know, I've done lots of different characters and lots of different accents, and uh, okay. And my wife Julie, she said to me, she said, uh, "So, which book are you working on today?" And I said, "Oh, I'm a lawyer in this one." And she's like, "All oh, right, what? A British lawyer?" I says, "No, American." And she's like, "What?" And I said, "Yeah, um, a woman, and it's uh, <laughs> LGBTQ." <laughs> Uh, and, and and she's black and she's like but you're nothing like that and i went i know but i got the gig yes, i like your voice yeah it was your voice <laughs> yeah because uh, i'm always i like to be different and you know, I, I love to be different i hate to be same old same old and your voice was definitely different so yeah I'm well, sure thanks for that. Appreciate it. Yeah. So, plus, it was nice because, you know, sometimes you, you do something and people think, oh, it's girls. She's going to hire a female. And I was like, mm, I'm going to hire this guy. <laughs> <laughs> so when 
when I tell my friends, that's like, oh yeah, this guy is on there rating girls like us, and they was like, a guy. <laughs> yeah, an English guy. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. Was cool. yeah. Oh, it really is good. So what's next for you? Is it, is it uh, are you going to write like uh, seasons five, six, seven, eight? Or are you done with four, do you think? Yeah, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to write, um, continue writing Girls Like Us five, six, and seven. I'm trying yeah. to get up to Girls Like Us season 10. Yeah. Um, if everything goes well, next year we're going to film Girls Like Us three. So right. Gonna be good. So that's going to be right. happy. You're gonna see Zoe and Keisha get married, so that's gonna be. It's gonna oh, be nice, nice, nice! Oh, that'll give it a whole new dynamic, won't it? You'll you'll yeah, have them as a as an interest. actual married couple. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice. So, uh, but other than that, I'm in publishing. I think uh, I think since October, uh, I probably have published over a hundred books. Um, kid you not. Yeah. yeah. Wow. But I got books. I got all kind of books. I got um journals. I got notebooks. I have uh, math books, from addition to geometry. It's like I'm forever doing something. I never sit down. Great. It's the way to be. It's a way to be. It's better than the alternative. Got to enjoy the ride. A lot of children's books. So coloring books, uh, children books. So yeah. Just Google my name on Amazon. And, and Nikkei you know. Bay, you can see the name. It's, oh, no, there it is. It's it's right. Yeah. It's right. Uh, Amazon and you'll right, see what I have. Right, right there. there. There's the, the name. Yeah. Is, it's right there under Nikkei. And I will put yeah. in the description to this, uh, I'll put links to the audio books of Girls Like Us, okay. season um, one and season two. But if you want to, I'll see if I can find a page on Amazon. Well, yeah, and the film. Well, if I put, I'll I'll put the direct links on Amazon to the to the audiobooks, but I'll also see if I can find a link just by putting your name in that might give me a lineup of everything you do or as much. I'll do that. I'll put that in the description. You, you put just, that name in, you're gonna get it all. Great, you'll get it all. You'll get it all. So if you're watching on YouTube, uh, click on that link that I'll put in there. Hey, thank you very much, Anika. It's so good to meet you at last. Okay, and. Uh, We'll keep going. And thanks once again for choosing me as your narrator for this project. Oh, it's, it's special. Oh, it's really good. Just get ready for part three and season four. It's going to be amazing. I yeah. It. I hate interviews. <laughs> you were great, though. You were really, interviews. really good. It's so funny. I mean, when people take pictures of me, like if I'm out at a film festival, I hate pictures. I hate interviews. <laughs> And all my friends, I'd be like, oh, I wish, I wish I was you. I'm like, you can be me. I hate it. It's like, I just want to do the work and just like go home and relax. And that's it. But it's I so don't... nice to see you, though. You're lovely. I know. I know. Thank you. I thank you. <laughs> you know, I'll tell my friends, I'll be like, yeah, Graham Mack hit me up. He interviewed me. <laughs> yeah, well, what I'll do is. Like, my friends was tripping like a guy. I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> he did well, egg and light, especially in, um. Let me see. Was it part one at the in the last episode when they was fighting and Zoe and Keisha was going at it? I was just laughing. <laughs> I I had not laughed so hard in a long time. You were so funny.